Nick Wilson with Dan Brownlee after a 1-0 win away at Binfield. And Dan, can you put into words how big a win that feels like? It's a big win. Um, and it's made bigger because of the the quality of game, to be honest. that we, we, we I thought Binfield started fantastically. Um, the opening 10-15 minutes, we didn't have to deal with their pace. They were getting in behind us. Um, and we rode our luck at times. And, and credit to the boys, they dug in, they stuck to it, stayed in the game. Um, but it was a it was a good game of football, you know, and that that's why I think it felt uh, it was a big game beforehand. Make no bones about it. Binfield is second in the form table, only behind us. Um, so for that, it had a, a, a level to it. But the the game itself, as you go and play it, 10, 15, 20 minutes in, you realise how big a game it is because that was that was some hard yards we had to put in. Um, and Binfield, fair play to them, they're a terrific side. They made it really difficult. They got real quality. Um, and it was a really good, honest game of football. You know, it was. Um, yeah, we rode our luck at times, but the the, the chances we created, I, I thought we deserved the win. When you when you look at chances created, particularly in the first half, we had three or four. Um, but make no mistake, Binfield had their own, and, and they'll feel hard done by to to uh, come uh, the losing side today. When you put it into the context of results against the other top teams this season where we've taken defeats, does yeah. that make it feel even more important for you? It does. Look, we, had, we had a meeting about it a couple of Thursdays ago um, about the way we were going to approach these types of games. And um, Roger, I've just heard Roger Herridge say it that on, on his way in, saying fine margins of this game. And, it's, and he's absolutely right. Um, and he also said nothing's won yet. And he's absolutely right. Nothing is won yet. But um, we can be afforded our ability to celebrate that style of game because it was... Like I said, we've had to work really hard for it. Um, we don't believe anything's done. You know, we, we're, just, we're just celebrating a 90 minutes where we've had to really put in a shift. So um, I'm proud of the boys for the way they've handled themselves today. I'm proud of the boys and, and the way that they've um, they've gone about the game. And uh, yeah, it, it does. It, beating teams at the top is something we need to be better at. And, and today the boys delivered. It was a fantastic performance. Not always pretty, um, but the, the moments we created, I think, were worthy of uh, what I believe to be three points. The lead at the top's going to seven points tonight. How important is a gap like that at this point in the season? It's as, as important as any point, really. Um, look, I, I said last week, we're not getting carried away. You know, The, the reason why we celebrated the way we did tonight was because it, it, it felt like a really big, important win, and it was. And that's what I need to get through to our supporters. Look, we're, we're taking it game by game, and I know it's a boring thing to say, but the supporters need to allow themselves to enjoy these individual moments and not think too far ahead. And look, I, I believe that we can have a few more of these moments over the course of the next 16, 17 games, or how many we've got. Um, but it is one foot in front of the other, and the boys are the boys are buzzing in that change room. There's no two ways about it. But the moment they step out, it will be concentration on Saturday and going to get a result of tooting, and that's that's our ultimate aim. Um, but we can afford ourselves to enjoy these moments because they don't come around very often, you know. Like, um, but look, it's a it's a great win. Um, we, we had a, a couple of difficulties with with selection today with Michael Atkinson uh, coming out very late in the day, um, as kind of late as five six o'clock. Uh, so we've had to shuffle the pack. But credit to the boys once again. The subs make a difference. The boys uh, stood up to the mark, and it's a, a very very good win. Even at step four, we can't escape deadline day drama. Paul Hodges coming in and was announced just before kickoff. Or did you make a first <laughs> debut? For yeah, he's, he's good, Oji. Like, uh, I don't quite know how we've got him. Um, it, it feels a bit of a cheat card, to be honest. He's a, he's a very, very gifted footballer. I've been afforded the luxury of working with him um, on his rise uh, into football. We took him from Abbey Rangers when I was over at Hartley Whitney, and he was he was magnificent then. And what he's gained now is that level of experience. And you've seen it in the closing moments where he's winning fouls in high areas, and he's he's, he's working the ball, and his communication is great. Paul's going to be a terrific asset to this football club, both on and off the pitch. He's a he's a fantastic lad, um, and I'm. The most pleasing thing about it is that you look at his history and the ability of the lad and the conversation must have lasted 10 minutes and he was in. Um, and that says a lot about this football club and where we're heading and, and the opportunity that we've been afforded just through hard work of good people. Um, and, and to have someone like Paul want to join us um, without real hesitation because he, he, he bought into what we're trying to achieve not just now but in the future um, and for me that's a that's a huge huge pat on the back to not just the starting 11 and the first team and whatever but to the entire club like we can we can be really proud of that signing because it's a it's not just a statement it's um it's hopefully a thing a sign of things to come thank you very much Dan. cheers thank you Nick.